Welcome back to the Sure Sales Group Show, episode 32. I am so fortunate and lucky to have the chief executive of the Falston Group here with us today, Mr. Rob Weinhold. Thanks for stopping by. My man, I'm, I'm happy to be here. The reason I wanted Rob to come down is he has a really awesome company. They're here in our building. Rob's helped me out a lot personally, professionally. Um, so to get it going, why don't you tell people a little bit about your background? You have a, a pretty interesting uh, background. Well, it, I mean, I guess it's interesting, but you know, way back in the late 80s, I started my career in the Baltimore Police Department. So I ran around and played cops and robbers when I was about 30 or 40 pounds lighter. I had more hair and my 40 time was pretty fast too at the time. So I could run down alleys pretty quickly. But uh, I learned a lot through my years on the street. Uh, eventually became a spokesperson for the department and had an opportunity to go out represent the men and women of the Baltimore Police Department. You know, I'm a big fan of law enforcement. I think you have a lot of ordinary people who are thrust into extraordinary circumstances each and every day, and they're very heroic in their actions, and I just don't think that they get enough credit. So anyway, fast forward, I went down as the Chief of Staff in the Department of Justice. Uh, I then uh, finished my public service career, and I worked for Cal and Bill Ripken for almost seven years, and I ran their core business. Uh, sales marketing, business development operations, built a youth complex in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, but did a lot of work to uh, grow baseball worldwide the Ripken way, which is their mission. And I really took that responsibility seriously because I know the positive impact sport can have on families uh, throughout the world. And so that was a great, great uh, platform with which to ultimately open up my own company, Falston Group, which opened up about eight years ago. And we're a trusted executive advisory firm focusing on three distinct business verticals. And that would be marketing and public relations, crisis and issue leadership, and safety and security. So we worked very hard to build, strengthen, and defend reputations each and every day. So that was a lot. This guy's been on the streets of Baltimore. He's essentially an expert. I've seen you on Fox News, CNBC, CNN doing your thing when Baltimore's had some turmoil. Um, so thanks again for coming out. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, so Rob's helped me a lot with brand strategy. How do we tell our story? This whole kind of show that we've been doing and experimenting with. But a little bit more about the Faustin Group. Um, marketing and PR. So you've helped me with some of this stuff. Um, one of the things that really resonated when we sat down was, you know, Rob told me, hey, you're young. You guys are different. You're changing the game. You're doing real estate differently. You're like the Under Armour of Baltimore real estate. And when he said that, I kind of had a lot more ideas spark and, and things we've been executing on. When you're talking with companies, let's just hit this first one first. Marketing, PR, that's a big deal. If you don't have good marketing, if your phones aren't ringing, it doesn't matter how good you are at selling, you're not getting opportunities. So what are you seeing out there in the marketplace when people are saying, hey Rob, we're not, you know, we're not getting what we want out of our marketing and PR? Well, there's a mantra that we have in the Falston Group and it's this, if you don't tell your story, someone else will. And when someone else tells your story, it certainly won't be the story you want told. And I don't care who you are, but when you're in business, you have a need to amplify your message once you define it. And so people are not using the traditional and digital platforms they have to tell their story in a creative, curious kind of way so that they attract people, attract their attention, and ultimately move them uh, to some form of action, right? There's got to be a call to action, whether it's buy a car, call a real estate agent, uh, and make an informed decision so that you can make the best life decision for you. So again, it's about telling your story, but it's not just your story. It's about having a customer experience that matters, that has impact and is repeatable. I say it's scalable and repeatable. So if I have a great experience with you and buying a home, I know I will. I'm going to tell so many people what a painless yet informed exercise it was because I now have the home of my dreams. You've so, got so many nuggets in there. You know, you can rewind that and listen to those, but a couple of takeaways there is you have to tell your story, amplify the message, but you have to define it first. So we're still trying to define our story. We're a growing company. We want to serve people at a high level. Um, we have good tactics and strategies and, and methods of doing it. And our message has kind of been, you'll see it up here and, and in some of our pieces, we say, who you work with matters. Because in real estate, we find that there's so many agents, the barrier to entry is low. If you're watching this video, you you probably are or know 10, 20 real estate agents. Maybe you have one in your family, but who you work with matters. So that's some of our branding and some of our pitch. Um, I'm gonna add one more thing here while add it. pausing for a moment. I've known a number of people that have worked at Under Armour and heard, have heard Kevin Plank speak a couple of times. And it's interesting because one of the things that I came away with years ago was the quickest way to get fired at Under Armour is to do something and then when asked why you're doing it, 
when you say that's because we've always done it that way. So you have to be innovative. You have to have a lot of adapt adaptability. Yeah. You know, and make sure from a leadership standpoint, you're mobilizing a team that can really drive results. You know, I think leaders do a lot of things well, and I'll just throw a couple out right now. You have to be a great communicator, teacher, motivator. You have to empower. And most importantly, you must hold people accountable. Jack Welsh says it best when he says, hire the very best and hold them accountable. Thoroughbreds want to run, hire the thoroughbred. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And adaptability is big. One kind of Darwinian thing we always say around here is, hey, just because you're great, you're strong, the strongest don't always survive. It's the ones most willing to change and adapt. And uh, this industry that we're in and the, you know, the businesses you consult with, you know, Tony Robbins says, it's not, don't focus on the business you're in, focus on the business you're becoming because you got to change. That's really, there's a lot. We could talk about that for like an hour. But you also mentioned well, we may not capture people's attention for it. Yeah, so we're gonna to go to the next you one. You have mentioned... a pretty face. I don't remember. They're gonna tune out. So hey, if people want to talk more, Rob and I are here every day at the Broom Factory, thirty-five hundred Boston Street, Panera Breads across across the hall here. Um, we love to have coffee with you, and this this is great stuff. Yeah, wrap it up. You mentioned leadership. Yeah. And there's a lot of things leaders need to do, and that's something you're never done becoming and growing into. Um, how do you guys help people? Uh, talk a little bit about the crisis component because you have a unique lens there because right. you've seen, you know, you've been involved in some crazy situations. And so crisis and then the leadership component as well. Well, I mean, I'll just say this. It doesn't matter who you are. Crisis uh, is going to happen. It's not if, but when. So we all face crisis, whether it's on the personal side, you may deal with issues like financial trouble, health issues, addiction, divorce, and so on and so forth. Or you just struggle to get up every day and swing away and make things happen. That's a struggle for a lot of people, and we need to recognize that. But on the professional side, we deal with issues like social media attack, bad press, litigation, investigations, human resource issues, and so on and so forth. You know, if a group of stakeholders mobilize against a company, you've got a problem. You have to know how to handle it. And a lot of leaders, I find, when difficult days start to occur, they stick their head in the sand. They hope it goes away. But the bottom line is it's not going to go away. And we believe that through the right levels of predictability and the right goals and strategies and tactics, you can take short-term adversity and turn it into long-term advantage if you're willing to do that. Put your hand up, take responsibility, look people in the eye and tell them what you're going to do differently so that these types of issues don't happen again. It could be a product recall, it could be a workplace violence situation, uh, bad press, social media attack, and so on and so forth. It's going to happen, it's just a matter of when. The question is, are you prepared? So you help companies, um, I'm, I'm starting to feel like, man, maybe I should take some more classes in that, so when it happens, I'm not panicking, but. Uh... Hey, look, let me tell you real quick, and I'm not trying to interrupt you here, but <laughs> the bottom line is this, who can't lead when the sun is shining, morale's up, profits are where they need to be, and man, it's great to walk down the hall and say good morning to everyone. It takes a special kind of leader to lead through crisis because the sun has to shine and people are going to depend on you to lead no matter whether the sun is shining or there's clouds outside. Yeah. So again, the decisions you make today will be judged by many for years to come. You've got to make the right decisions. So do you guys do some kind of like training, preventative maintenance, I imagine, is something you're going and talking to these companies and you want to get ahead of the curve, anticipate it. So I'm sure that's, a, I know that's one of your verticals that you're known for uh, and have a lot of well-respected clients and testimonials there. Let's jump to this last one. This is something that strikes home to me. I'm talking with families every single day. We do a lot. Um, in Baltimore City, I think we'll do over 350 deals just within the city limits. Um, Rob and I both agree Baltimore City gets a bad rap for a lot of things, but not to go off on that tangent. How should I be talking to people about, let me just put you on the spot, would you say Canton, Fells Point, Federal Hill, are these places safe to live from a guy who's been in the alleys, who's been the chief, what was it, chief of staff for the Baltimore City uh, Police chief Department? Chief spokesperson, uh, ran around and yeah. you know, I was a police officer on the street, so I've had a chance to go in many homes and work in many neighborhoods, and uh, I do think Baltimore gets a bad rap. I love Baltimore, I love the city of Baltimore, I love so many things about it, but with a high homicide rate and a high crime rate, and shows like The Wire, as great as The Wire is, I mean, it, uh, a lot of people have a perception about Baltimore. You look at the riots a couple of years ago, I travel all over the country, and people ask me, well, where are you from? And I'm like, Baltimore, they go, oh man, is it safe in Baltimore? Right. And I really, 
take that ambassadorship very seriously because I do believe in Baltimore and the people that live, work, and play. So to get to your question, look, any big city, any neighborhood, it doesn't matter whether it's rural or urban, you have to do the right things from a safety and security perspective to protect your home, protect your property, and to protect yourself when you're out running around. So what are those things? So say I'm buying a house, I don't know anything about safety, security, self-defense, you know, the whole litany of things. What do you just give me the basic, if you're telling the viewer, hey, you buy a house in Canton, you're a single woman living by herself, what steps do you take? Well, I mean, I think first and foremost, you have to take a look at your environment. You have to make sure that you're uh, disciplined about locking your door, uh, maybe closing your uh, drapes or curtains at night. Uh, make sure that when you're walking around at night, whether it's uh, socially or whatever the case may be, walk with people, walk in well-lit areas. Uh, make sure your locks are working. You know, have someone who knows a little bit more about safety and security come to your home uh, and, and go ahead and give you some um, tips, you know. So a lot of times what we find is criminals want to go down the path of least resistance. And that means they'll find an open door or an open window or they might case a location, for lack of a better term. Keep valuables um, out of sight in your car. That's where a lot of break-ins occur. You know, you hear this larceny from auto category. It's because people see your iPhone on the seat or money in the ashtray. Just remove valuables and use some common sense and the likelihood of becoming a victim of a crime decreases dramatically. Yeah, thanks for saying that. You know, I have two young sisters that I love, they're not young anymore, younger than me, who are like walking around Baltimore. So I, you yeah. see the stories, you're just like, man, this could happen to anyone at any time. So it's kind of like the disciplined approach makes a lot of sense. Well, it makes a lot of sense. And I, so, I also say, don't become predictable. So if you leave your home at the same time every day and you get the same cup of coffee in the same establishment and get in your car, drive to work and come home and your pattern is the same, it's very easy for someone to see what you're doing and ultimately to make you the victim of a crime. But you wanna make sure that you leave at different times. You might not park your car in the same location. Change your habits and become unpredictable. And again, that diminishes your chances of becoming a victim of a crime. Again, I'll go back to this. It doesn't matter where you are. I travel a lot throughout the United States and in every location I'm in, I see the same element. Everybody has the same concerns. So again, don't become predictable. Take the, um, you know, do care and caution to target harden is what we call it and make yourself a little bit more you know proof or fortified against becoming a victim and I think you'll be okay and by the way when in doubt don't be afraid to call 911 what we have found is people are like I don't know if I should call 911 it's really not an emergency it's just a little bit urgent I would say if you have that awkward feeling call 911 the great men and women of the Baltimore Police Department want to respond they want to help give them that opportunity to do so there's so many words that he's using that I'm like, wow, I'm talking to someone with decades of police experience. He's talking about uh, larceny from auto category. I'm gonna start saying that because it makes me sound smart. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is larceny from auto. Your car didn't get broken into. This is larceny well, you're, from you're, auto. You're giving me too much credit. There's a lot of people that can give you this uh, information, but it's just what I've learned in you know, yeah. my decades. I'm not gonna tell you how old I am, but uh, you're pretty close when I'm kind of on the back nine here. I yeah, think. well, I know you're a grandfather, so congratulations. <laughs> Well, tell you what, to wrap up, Rob and I could talk all day and we actually have on other occasions about each one of these things. If you're interested in how to tell your story effectively, establish a better brand, get PR, you're all over, the, your, your contacts, not to go down this diatribe, but Rob's got contacts as the chief spokesperson of the Baltimore City Police Department in this town, in Baltimore City, great guy to know. So here, talk to Rob. This stuff, I'm interested to learn a little bit more as we lead and grow our team um, we have 18 people now. I think it was only a couple weeks ago I said we had 16. We just brought on some more. So these people need to get it, uh, you know, embraced in our culture. And then safety and security. Um, I know you just barely scratched the surface, but anything you want to tell people on just calls to action with the Falston Group? Well, I would just say this. I mean, there's a lot of great firms out there who do a lot of great work in these areas. Um, and so trust, you know, your professional advisors that you call. And I know this seems like a little bit of a love fest here, and the fact is I really like this guy. And I know you guys are doing great, great work for sure. Uh, but I also want to compliment you and your team because you're out here, you're proponents for the city of Baltimore, uh, you're encouraging people to live in the city of Baltimore. And what I know is we were talking a lot about safety and security, and since it's on a lot of people's minds, I can tell you that an engaged community is a safe community.
Okay, um, I was in Washington D.C. yesterday talking about this very issue. I uh, do some speaking for the Department of Justice in different parts of the country, and people ask this question: You have to be involved, right? And if you're involved, you're going to be in pretty good shape. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. It's been my pleasure to know you, and I've loved watching you from a you know, a little twerp running around the neighborhood, and now all of a sudden you're a big guy running around making yeah. things happen, creating positive change. So it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for having Rob, me. Rob, thanks so much. All right, man. That's all we have for today. Anytime. Hey, Rob, why don't you take this one? Why don't you leave the viewers with a little O, by the way? I'll give it a shot. By the way, it's not just about customer experience. It really is about trust. Whether it's a relationship you're in or a business that you utilize, it is all about trust. And by the way, trust isn't earned in one hour or one day. It's all of the little interactions that you have with someone each and every day, which allows you ultimately to say, I trust that person. I trust this guy, all right, and I trust this company. But at the end of the day, think about your own life and challenge yourself. Do I trust this person or this company? If that answer is no, get rid of them. If the answer is yes, bring them a little bit closer and continue to do business with them. That's my shot. Did I do all right? Hey, I appreciate know. you saying that about right. us. And um, yeah, we trust you guys, and I really appreciate your time. You've helped me. Yeah. I remember him probably six years ago, I called this guy and I said, Hey, will you take a meeting with me? And I met you at Einstein Bagels. I'm not sure if you remember yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, sure. And you gave me some good advice about growth and just kind of encouraged me to keep going. And um, I know you're, you have that impact on a lot of people. So thanks again. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, let me tell you something. We started at Einstein's, but then we worked our way to a Mexican restaurant a couple of times. And I eat more, you know, chips La and Tolteca. Salsa. Oh my heaven, we can't meet there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get a little slimmer here. But anyway, yeah. thanks a lot. Hey, shout out to Enjoy La Tolteca, Fonzie, share the video. All yeah. right, see you next time. All right.